Hi boys and girls. So this week we're going to going to work together to study and practice responding to test questions on narrative passages. These passages are fiction or historical fiction. So remember on a test, um, a passage is just the text that you're asked to read. And when I'm asking you about a narrative passage, that means it has characters, the setting, um, a plot, and some kind of resolution. So Today, to get started, we're going to read a passage together. I'm going to read it out loud, and you're going to follow along, reading it in your head at the same time I read it out loud. We're going to do this together and do it in a way that you're going to read the passage um, by yourself. Here's a, a way to read that will help you get more interested in the passage and understand it better. So I'm going to show you this chart. It says, when reading a story. So these are the things you need to do when you're reading a story. You need to think of who the characters are, the main character, family, and friends who are secondary characters. What do we know about them early in the story? What do we know about them later on in the story? Where does the setting take place? I'm sorry, where does it take place and why does that matter? That's our setting. And last but not least, what is the big problem in the story? Sorry, that's kind of getting cut off. But what is the big problem in the story? So if you think about this, this is actually talking about the character, I'm sorry, the story elements. So um, it's really important when you start to read a, pa a passage that you read the directions. So the directions are here. These are critical because often they'll tell you some information that you that will help you when you're reading the text. So let me go through and read the directions. So let's start by reading the directions. So I'm going to sit up tall. I'm going to listen up as these things are especially important. And they often tell us the, jo the genre. So the genre is just the, what kind of book is it? Is it fiction? Is it historical fiction? And so on. Directions. Read the story, then answer questions 19 through 23. Okay, so we know it's a story. We now need to read the instructions if there are any. Th that sometimes tells us the characters and the setting, which you know is the setting is the place and the time. While on vacation with his parents and digging for dinosaur bones, Benny makes a surprising discovery. Young boys are not the only creatures who lose teeth. So now we stop and th think. What do we know? Think to yourself and let me reread it. So... While on vacation with his parents and digging for dinosaur fossils, Benny makes a surprising discovery. Young boys are not the only creatures who lose teeth. So we already know that in this story, one of the characters will be, will be Benny, and he's a boy on vacation with his parents. He's in a place where there are dinosaur fossils. I wonder where they dig for fossils. So that would tell me about the setting. So I'm thinking, where might they dig for fossils? Not in the city. Maybe it's like in the woods or in a desert. Oh, it says it right. It says that Benny makes a surprising discovery that has something to do with losing teeth. Hmm. Okay, we've read enough to know what a genre, what genre this is, a story, so we know who the text is mostly about. Now we're ready to read the passage itself. First, let me think about what we will especially notice. What pays what pays off to notice in a story. So since I know it's a story, I know that it's going to follow the story elements. There's going to be some type of problem in the story. So I'm going to be on the lookout for that. So I'll read it out loud and you follow along. As we read, we're going to pay attention to things on that chart that I showed you. So let me bring it back. We're going to pay attention to things on this chart. Remember, who's the character? What do we know about them early and later in the story? Where does the story take place and why does that matter? And what's the big problem in the story? All right. Digging for dinosaurs was hot work. Benny sat back on his heels and took a long drink from his water bottle. At first, when Mom and Dad had told him they were going on a dinosaur dig for vacation, he'd been excited. He'd bragged to his friends that he'd find the skeleton of a never-before-discovered dinosaur. The Benosaurus, they probably would name it. But the real dig wasn't at all what he expected. For starters, he wasn't even digging. No shovels. 
Dave, the paleontologist in charge, told them. Any dinosaur bones buried here would be within a couple of feet of the surface. We don't want to risk clunking around and breaking them. Then he handed out ice picks and painted paint and paintbrushes and showed everyone how to chip and brush away sand and dirt slowly and carefully a little bit at a time. The most important thing is, to, is knowing where to look, Dave said. Some rocks aren't old enough to have dinosaur bones. Other rocks are too old. We've studied this area before and found lots of fossils, so I'm hopeful you'll find some too. Well, that had been two days ago, and so far the most exciting thing Benny had found was that his front tooth was loose. He wiggled it now. If he couldn't find any dinosaur bones, at least he could show his friends back home that he had lost a tooth. All right, so I'm going to stop right there. I read four paragraphs, and you notice in the left side it tells me that I stopped at paragraph four. Okay, so I know that the main character is Benny, who's on vacation with his parents and looking for dinosaur fossils. But by now, there's also this other character, a guy named Dave. So it talks about Dave, the paleontologist. He's, um, what do they call it? Like, a, uh, if you don't know what a paleontologist is, it has, I'm looking around, it has something to do with dinosaurs. So I'm thinking he's someone who looks for dinosaur bones. Now we need to think. What do we know about the characters at the beginning? And let's remember that stories won't come right out and say it. They won't say the characters this way. Instead, we have to look and watch what the character says or does, and we need to think. Well, what kind of person is this character? And especially, we need to think, what is the character's feeling? So, what do you think about how Benny is feeling right now? So, hmm, if I look back... Let's see. It says, well, that had been two days ago, and the far, so far the most exciting thing Benny had found was his front tooth was loose. He wiggled it now. If he couldn't find any dinosaur bones, at least he could show his friends back home that he'd lost a tooth. So, hmm, yes, he is disappointed, right? He thought that this would be really exciting, and nothing has happened on the dig at all, and the only thing that has happened is that his tooth is loose. So this is when I would have you turn and talk with your partner. And what about, I would want you to tell me a little bit about Dave. What have you learned about him? So I'm going to give you like a few seconds to think about that to yourself. What have you learned about Dave um, so far what we've read? So I'm thinking, I'm looking back to this section right here. And it says, um... It says over here that I'm thinking like he's kind of careful. Like he's talking about how he handed out brushes and he's not letting them use uh, shovels. And he wants everyone to be very careful. So he, I would say that he's kind of careful. If we look back at our chart, we want to think that we want to think about how we can kind of spot a problem early on. So you know that stories, they don't just have characters and settings. They also have problems. Does it feel like a problem or at least the hint of a problem that's being revealed so far or shown? It seems to me like the dig isn't exciting. So maybe that could be the problem. Remember, I'm thinking back to that chart I showed you earlier. Is I know, I'm knowing who the characters are. Who the characters are. I'm telling you what I know about them early on in the story. I still haven't really figured out the setting, but I'm thinking along the lines of what my problem might be so far. Let's read on. Remember, we are still thinking about what we know about the characters. Keep in mind that often in a story, the characters, the main characters' feelings change. So far that we, know, so far we know that Benny, at the start of the story, is, well, he seems a little bit disappointed. So remember, we're going to look to see if he's if his care his feelings change all right let's go to paragraph five dave crouched besides benny how's it going he asked okay benny said it seems very it didn't seem very nice to say that he was bored this is pretty slow dave nodded yep he agreed it's hard work sometimes paleontologists and fossil hunters look for weeks without finding anything and we hardly ever find a whole skeleton he added, you know, Ben, if you're tired of searching, you can always help someone else on the crew. So there is a hint that Benny's feelings could start to change. Why is Dave talking like this? What's going on? So I'm thinking that Dave is 
talking to Benny like this is because he's worrying, like, Benny is bored. He's kind of getting a hint that Benny's bored, and he's trying to figure out something that might be more fun for Benny to do. I'm kind of seeing that I'm learning a little bit more about the problem. I don't really see a solution yet, but I'm learning a little bit more about a problem. The problem. Maybe the solution is Benny's going to do something else. All right, so let's keep reading. Let's go to the next. I'm still on the lookout for something else in that story elements chart that I showed you. So I was talking about characters. I'm telling you what I know about them, but I'm still trying to figure out where does the story take place? I have a little hint of the problem. So let's keep reading, keeping that in mind. Benny looked around the dry, rocky hillside. Dave's assistants were busy taking photographs and drawing pictures and making charts. Some were using GPS devices to make maps of the area. Some were writing in notebooks. Dave said it was important to take good field notes to record exactly what you did and where you were when you looked for fossils. Benny thought holding the GPS tool might be fun, but he wasn't giving up. I'll keep looking, he said. But, he added, thinking out loud, the pictures always show dinosaurs in swampy places. Did they live in deserts, too? Ah, said Dave, some probably did, but not around here. Millions of years ago, this wasn't desert. It was wet and green and lush. The earth's changed a lot since the time of the dinosaurs. Dave slapped Benny on the back and got to his feet. Keep up the good work, Ben, he said encouragingly. I think today will be your lucky day. And then it happened. Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped a section. Pick, chip, brush, and sweep. Benny bent over his patch of rocky ground and carefully cleared away the sand and gravel. When he needed a break, he wiggled his loose tooth. The sun climbed higher and hotter in the sky. He was getting into the rhythm of things. Either that or the heat was just making him drowsy. And then it happened. My tooth! Benny said, surprised. He stared down at the dirt. My tooth! Benny walked. My dinosaur tooth. I found a real, live dinosaur tooth. So right now I want you to think about the setting because we already, we've gone over now. I know a little bit about where it's taking place. So I need to think back to my chart. Why does that matter? I know where it takes place, but why does it matter where it's taking place? So if I look at my passage again, it says that it's a dry, rocky hillside. So why does the fact that the story is set in this time period and uh, place, why does it matter? So I'm thinking that the setting is important because it seems like, since it's dry, rocky, and hillside, it seems like a lot of work. And it seems like the people helping Dave and his team, they're doing a lot. So the setting tells me that the characters in the story, the other paleontologists and the other assistants, have to work hard in order to find and uh, figure out where dinosaur fossils are. I want you to think about what you've learned about the characters in the setting. So it's really important that you um, you pay attention to character relationships and how characters start to change. So let's finish up the text, and then we're going to go back and focus on those questions. So it says, Dave hurried over to look, careful not to disturb the ground in front of Benny's spine. Well, I'll be, he said. It's a tooth, all right. What kind is it? Benny asked excitedly. Is it a T-Rex, a potosaurus, triceratops? Dave laughed, but he kept studying the fossil on the ground. Well, Ben, he finally said, I've seen a lot of dinosaur teeth, but this this one's different. I think you may have found one we haven't seen before. Good job. So, readers, the important thing is now that you've read the passage with your mind turned on, noticing the things that are really always important in the story when reading this kind of genre, you are in a good position to answer the multiple choice questions that the test makers are going to ask you. I know this is just day one of our reading prep, test prep unit, and we're gonna get a, a, we are going to get way better at this as we work together over the next few weeks. But already, I bet you can do something pretty wise with the questions. Let's try one. Remember, when you do this, you are asking for the best answer. There will often be a few answers that are right for the story, but you need to notice that the test makers are asking and reading all the answers to try and figure out the best answer.
So we've talked about this in class before, how usually there's a good answer and there's a better answer. So let's look at one of the questions. Let me pull it up. All right. All right, so. Sorry. All right, so here's our question. It says, paragraph 9 through 11 show that Benny, A, knows about changes that took place over time, B, prefers working in cooler weather, C, enjoys thinking out loud, or D, continues to work hard. There are a lot of times that the test makers are going to ask you questions that pertain to a certain section. It might be paragraphs or it might be lines in the story. So it says paragraphs 9 through 11. So it's really important that we look back at the text to find those paragraphs. So here is paragraphs 9 through 11. And I'm trying to figure out what do these paragraphs show about Benny? Let's see. So let me reread them. Benny thought Holding the GPS tool might be fun, but he wasn't giving up. I'll keep looking, he said, but he added, thinking out loud. The pictures always show how dinos show dinosaurs in swampy places. Did they live in deserts, too? Ah, said Dave. You prob they Some probably did, but not around here. Millions of years ago, this wasn't desert. It was wet and green and lush. The earth's changed a lot since the time of the dinosaurs. Dave slapped Benny on the, the back and got to his feet. Keep up the good work, Ben. He said encouragingly, I think today will be your lucky day. Uh, pick, chip, brush, and sweep. Benny bent over his patch of rocky ground and carefully cleared away the sand and gravel. When he needed a break, he wiggled his loose tooth. The sun, the sun climbed higher and hotter in the sky. He was getting into the rhythm of things. Either that or the heat was just making him drowsy. So now that I've read that back, let me go back to my question. So A knows about the changes that took place over time. B, prefers working in cooler weather, C, enjoys thinking out loud, or D, continues to work hard. So when you come to multiple choice questions, there's usually two answers that it can't be. And one of the strategies that you can use to find the correct answer or the best answer and the good answer is crossing out answers that don't make sense. So when I looked about that, it didn't talk anything about cooler weather. It talked a little bit about, you know, uh, we're – the dinosaurs might have lived, but it didn't talk about anything about cooler weather. It talked about how hot it was, but it didn't say anything about cool weather. So I'm going to cross out B because it can't be B. So let's see. A knows about changes that took place over time. Well, let's see. If I go back to that section, it doesn't really talk about changes that took place over time. It talks about it in paragraph 10. It talks about how the earth used to be wet, green, and lush. But in par in paragraph 11, it doesn't talk about how it doesn't talk about how the earth has changed or how um, or how any changes have taken place over time. So this question says I have to look at paragraphs 9 to 11, so only in paragraph 10 does it tell me about changes. So I'm going to cross out A because not all those paragraphs talk about the changes that have happened. So I'm down to C and D. So I definitely have two answers that it could possibly be. There's a good answer and then there's the best answer. So let me think about these. So Paragraphs 9 through 11, through 11 do show that Benny does some thinking out loud, and they do show that he keeps working hard. But now I need to think, what's the best answer about all of those paragraphs? So you have to think about all the paragraphs together, not just two of them. So let's see. 9 through 10 and 11, I'm either looking for how he's thinking out loud in all three paragraphs or how he enjoys working hard in all three paragraphs. I'm sorry, how he continues to work hard in all three paragraphs. So let's see. On paragraph 9, he's talking about working and holding the GPS. Okay. He's not talking about, um, he's not really thinking out loud in that section. Oh, yeah, it does. It says, but he added thinking out loud. The picture 
always show dinosaurs in swampy places. All right, so in paragraph 9, he's thinking out loud, and he's also working hard. Let's check paragraph 10. Well, it doesn't say anything about him thinking out loud. Actually, this has a lot to do with just Dave talking. So he's not thinking out loud here. But it does. he does tell Benny to, Ben to keep up the good work, so it does talk about Ben doing work. Let's go to 11. Pick, chip, brush, and sweep. Ben, Benny bent over his patch of rocky ground. Hmm. It doesn't say anything about him thinking aloud in this section, too. But it does talk about him having to pick, chip, brush, and sweep. So now that I see and look back at the paragraphs, I know that Benny, he does enjoy thinking out loud in paragraph 9, but he's not thinking out loud in paragraphs um, 10 and 11. So that just leaves us with choice D because all paragraphs talk about him working hard. So I would go with D. So D is the best answer in this case. It's the best answer because each paragraph, 9, 10, and 11, show something about how Benny continues to work hard. Only one paragraph, paragraph 9, shows that he's thinking out loud. So readers, today we practice a way to approach reading and answering questions to test passages. You're going to try this a lot this week and we're going to see how it goes for you. Notice that we read just the directions and introduction and then we start to think about all we learned to get ourselves ready to read on. Noticing especially important stuff. We read a chunk at a time, so like a few paragraphs at a time, and paused to code what we noticed that was especially important. By the time you get to the questions, you'll be able to go back much more quickly to the parts you read to find support in your answers. So when I read the passage, you'll notice that I kept going back to the passage and back to the passage. It's really important when you're answering questions to do this. All right, so I look forward to our reading lesson tomorrow. There is an assignment on your Google Drive in the shared account. It says reading assignment, and you're going to write me a summary on how I went through my answers. What did you notice that I did? in order to get my answers. So be sure to write me a summary about what I did in this lesson.